Okay, thanks for joining me. Number three for hip hop albums from Southern California. So we'll get started with the self-titled album by Domino. Came out on Outburst Records in 1993. Domino was from Long Beach. And there were a couple of hit singles on here. Ghetto Jam, which is probably the best song, along with uh, Long Beach Thing, I like that one. And the other hit was Sweet Potato Pie. I saw him do some guest appearances. I saw the name come up here and there through the years, but this seems to be his one brush with uh, mainstream success. Regulate G-Funk Era by Warren G. This is the debut album by Warren G, and it came out on Def Jam in 1994. So everyone knows the song Regulate. I think it's probably one of the most well-known West Coast hip hop songs of all time with Nate Dogg. And as much as it's kind of overplayed, you can't deny it. I never get tired of that one. And I also forget how big this album was. I think this has gone four or five times platinum, pretty much based off of the strength of that song. But my second favorite song on here is probably... This is The Shack and Super Soul Sis. I don't think Warren G's even on there. It's a female rapper that he was associated with, but I love that beat. She was a great rapper. I should remember the name. But this is a classic album. WC, The Shadiest One. This is one of my favorite rap albums of all time. I know I've claimed I wasn't gonna repeat any albums on this series, but I just gotta talk about this one again. 1998, Payday Records. This whole thing's, this whole thing's perfect, but I'm gonna go with The Shadiest One and Like That. Those are my favorite songs on here. If you didn't know, WC, one of the three members of West Side Connection. The Dog Pound Gangsta LP by Daz Dillinger. 2005, Gangsta Advisory Records. I like the one I Gotta Hustle It Up. My Ambitions as a Rider. Do you think about um, Come Close? It's definitely a couple songs uh, for the ladies, we'll say, on here, but uh, th those are some good ones. And again, Daz, very underrated. He has put out so much music, and most of it's, most of it's good stuff. How Can You Forget, All Eyes On Me by Tupac. One of the best albums of all time. One of my favorite CD packages of all time, just the booklet, the discs, the classic Death Row Records back in here. Couple throwaways, but for a double disc, I gotta give us nine and a half out of 10. Fatal, In the Line of Fire. Now I believe Fatal was from New Jersey, but He's most widely known for being part of the Outlaws and part of Tupac's circle of rappers. So I'm gonna put him in here. 1998 Relativity Records. And there's two songs in particular that stick out to me. It's Every Day and the second song, M.O.B. with Freddie Fox. Those are by far the, the two standouts on here. Okay, another Warren G album. This is The Return of the Regulator. Pretty uh, similar album cover to his debut, but this was like his fifth full length. And this came out 2001 on Universal. And despite Warren G and Dr. Dre apparently being half brothers, they have not done a lot of uh, music together. But he did get a Dre beat on here for Looking At You. 
the hit single on here. This doesn't measure up to his older albums, but as I'm going through the track listing, this is actually a lot better than I remember it being. My favorite song here has got to be Yo Sassy Ways with Warren G, Snoop, and Nate Dogg. The Game, Doctor's Advocate. I believe this is The Game's second, at least major label, full-length album. 2006 on Geffen. When I go through my CDs, a part of me says I was never that big of a fan of The Game. I kind of question a lot of the things he said and done, but I look at my collection. It seems like I have most of his CDs somehow, <gasps> but... uh my favorite song on here. That song with Kanye West wouldn't get far. That, that's a fun one. Uh, the game is to be sold, not to be told by Snoop. So this was Snoop's debut album for No Limit Records. Third overall after he left Death Row. And this was definitely an interesting period for Snoop. Because, of course, No Limit Records were on top of the world at this point, but they also have a very distinct sound. The beats were all done by the No Limit producers, Beats by the Pound. So this was not the Snoop that people were used to. This was Snoop rapping in a No Limit style. But it was good for what it was. My favorites on here are The Opener, Snoop World, and $20 to my name. I forget who else is on here, but there's a million guest appearances, and I believe Fiend was on that one. And Fiend's a great rapper, we'll look at him some other day. Now this is an underrated classic. This is a Superfly from the extended Dog Pound family. And this is called That Whoop Dee Whoop. This came out in 2001 on OCF Entertainment. And this looks kind of like a low budget album cover, but like it's actually just old school and awesome, I think. And this is, I don't hear anyone talk about this. This CD rules. Every song's good. Superfly is, well, I was gonna say he produced all the songs, but it looks like they were all produced by him and Daz working together. And who do you have on here? Trady, Crooked Eye, Daz, Corrupt, Badass, Richie Rich, Gonzo, Exhibit. Uh, who's who of the West Coast during these years? And uh, did Superfly have more soul albums? I really don't know, but I should, because again, this is a, this is a nine and a half out of 10 for me. That's it for volume three. See you on the next one.